Welcome to Multiple Hats, a show about STEM professionals who have gone off script and carved their own path beyond the tracks that were set for them. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, medicine, how they found their why and what it takes to make it happen. And so just like this, we got to the end of 2023. And I want to thank you for listening to Multiple Hats and coming along with me on this entrepreneurship journey of all our guests. And you may be on your own journey or perhaps you enjoy hearing from the one who made a great daring move. Whatever brings your ears here, you're so welcome. And on this short episode today, I would like to take this opportunity to connect with you on a personal level. When I launched Multiple Hats, I had been told about a million times to focus on one thing and that it's best to do one thing well rather than many badly. And look, I get it. We can't do it all and it's not a bad piece of advice. But if you're like me or any of the founders that I interviewed, you're probably craving more than just one thing. And I'm here to tell you that this isn't a bad thing and in fact it can be a strength. We're all unique and if your brain is the kind that likes to focus on one thing, then that's all fine. But if you're not, having a broad interest is the foundation for connecting the dots and system thinking because really nothing works in isolation. So for me, I was one driver and that's how I fell into multiple hats. I just wanted to know how do people whose brains work like mine were doing to leverage it and what were they doing with it? And I figured out that they were all people who created their own script and did their own business. They brought all their pieces together in their very own perfect patchwork and created a new picture and often one that could have a really great impact. Besides, broad interest often goes hand in hand with a growth mindset and the ability to learn quickly and that's definitely crucial in starting your own business because chances are you're going to do it all for a little while. You're going to be the CEO, the CTO, the marketing specialist, HR, you name it. So versatility is going to be your best strength. Of course, there's a point where you need to protect your time and be very strategic about the thing that you as a founder will do and what you need to outsource, delegate, hire for. And when that point comes, well, you're in a good spot really, so more growth ahead. And we talk about being strategic in many episodes. So here you go. If your mind wanders in many places, you are not unfocused, you are not unstable. You're just on your way to build your own puzzle. And I can't wait to know what it will bring to the world. So let me know when it does. But beyond that, with multiple hats, my main goal, my true goal is really to lower the entry barrier for any aspiring change maker. And this is you. I strongly believe that once you take that first step, you know, when you get the ball rolling, you'll find a way to chase it. You'll find your crowd, you'll find your events, your mentors, accelerators, incubators, course, coaching, whatever you need, you will find it. There's so much out there. But that one first step, that entry barrier, that activation energy for all the kings out there, that's what killed the beast. You know, that's what makes the difference between the ones who speak about doing great things with best intentions and the ones who just do. And you may think that this is about having a stash of cash. And I hear you. But it has actually more to do with a mindset than cash. Of course, you will need some funding at some point. We talk at length about funding in the podcast. And I hear you saying, well, somebody's got to pay the bill, hey? And that's right, we all have those bills. And unless you are 18 years old, happy to catch surf until you break through, you'll have to find some money or buy some time. And you've heard it from our guest. If you are in the service industry, then you can be sustainable from day one by being very strategic, leverage your network and your previous skills and your 10 years in business, for example. In O2, you, Viv Allen, Natalie Chapman, Heather Catchpole and others, but it may take some time to get to sustainability. And you've got to get ready for it, that's for sure. And if you're in tech, then yes, we're talking big money, completely different level of money, and you've got to go pitching very early. Tune in for Dr. Damika Mistry, co-founder of Vical Diagnostics, and Miriam Parvis, co-founder of SDIP Innovations. They're both in the medtech sector, so they both talk about this funding and these first steps. 
But the point is that, yes, we will have to talk about money. But to start, to take that very first step, it's more about your mindset. And I hope that hearing about all these examples of founder and what state of mind gave them the courage or the momentum to take the leap, then you can find your own version of it. Some had a life trigger, a sudden realization that life's too short to not be your authentic self. Big hugs to you, Sue and Cassie. Some got made redundant and thought, hey, what a great use of this newly found time to the back of the napkin business plans and give it a go. Some thought, the job I want doesn't exist, so I'm going to create it. And some just brewed for a while, trying to find the missing piece. Some found inspiration in the frustration that comes when you stay at a problem for too long. Wherever you stand in this spectrum, there is a way forward. If you're paralyzed by what if or what may, then just get out of your head and stop overthinking it. Instead, start experimenting. Taking a step isn't like jumping off a cliff or having a baby. It does not commit you for life. And if you start something, you can go back or even better, go elsewhere. Decisions are, for the most of them, very reversible to some extent, and they are elastic. So if you find your way into this new journey of entrepreneurship and realize that beyond the hype and the excitement and the social media, beyond that novelty, then that's not for you, um, then so be it. No regrets and on what with whatever you like best. It might even be what you were doing before, but with a new frame, because now you know that doing your own thing or doing your own business isn't what you wanted to do. Chances are that on your experiments, you met new people, found new ways of moving, and that you're seeing a whole new world that you didn't see before from where you were standing. Like Lisa and I said so well, it's really all about audacity and action. So just give it a go. I hear you again talking about your bills. We don't have to go all in. We can start on the side and explore until you find whatever makes sense to you. Or you may even have a portfolio career for life, a mix of corporate, freelance and business. Or you might do both for a little bit and then get in a spot where you need to go full time because it's really needed and because it works. In this case, well, are you in a good spot? The great news is that there's no right or wrong, only your script. So do me a favor. You do you. You find your twist, you find your crowd, you find your ways. So that's for step one, inspiration and courage. And of course, we need to talk about what it takes to make it happen and what it takes to follow through. And we could go on a 10 chapter book about this attribute, but it's Christmas soon, so we don't want to do that. I actually think that there's only two fundamental traits that you need to cultivate to make it. And it's purpose and grit. Your inner motivation, because without a strong purpose, you'll drop out when it gets tough. And tough it will get. So back to your bookshelf, we've found your why from Simon Sinek. And the second one is resilience and grit. Go farther on the bookshelf to read Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by Angela Duckworth, whose research shows that grit and the growth mindset are the strongest predictor to success, not your IQ or your money. Yes, money helps, but still. And so with those two, you're well equipped. When people detract you, when you get a hundred no's for only one yes, or when you make a mistake and have to fix them. And that's not about being stoic. In fact, that's quite the opposite. You can have a cry. You can be devastated. You can throw the towel for a bit. You can scream. But then you come back up and you move on, learning from whatever mistake you've made. I do want to add a third one for the perfectionist out there. Perfection is great for Barbie. Not even anymore, to be honest, but for real people, perfection does not get you anywhere more than towards exhaustion or doing nothing at all. So do yourself a favor, give it up. Plus, people are not there tracking your every move to see where you made a mistake. So unless you're Beyonce and people are really watching you, and then if you are, then who cares, right? So perhaps we'll go on this 10 chapter of Resilient Individual another day. But for now, I want to ask you to make multiple hats a two-way conversation. I want to know about your questions. I want to know what you want more of, what you need more, what topics matters to you. I'm planning about, you know, 
IP strategy, accelerators, incubator, capital, small tech, more impact, and even perhaps charity, entrepreneurship, and social businesses. So give me a cue. Tell me what you would like most. I also would love to get your take on this. What resonates with you? What mistakes that you thought was a deal breaker but really wasn't? What's the turn that you've taken that changed you? And a great way to do that is you can comment on my LinkedIn post or leave me a message on my website. You can just Google Angelic Greco at multiple hats and you'll find the website. It's really important for me to know what you think of it because really I'm doing this for you. So let's get on with our Christmas break. And if you're looking for more reads, I suggest The Power of Onlyness by Nile of a Merchant to find how only you can make this special dent in the world. This Working Life by Lisa Leong and Monique Ross to find how you can experiment with a portfolio career. And There Has to Be More by Rachel Service, a step-by-step -step audit of yourself and how to get more of what you want. Happy reading. That's it for me. Tune in for the next episode on Feb 13, 2024. We'll talk about neurodivergence and how this can be your powerhouse.